Welcome to Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast. One, two. Welcome to Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast. I'm Jeffrey A. McGuire. You can call me Jam. And this is where we celebrate the Typo 3 community, sharing your stories, talking about your projects, and the difference you make in, around, and with Typo 3 CMS. It is my great pleasure to bring you a sort of a bonus episode for application the typo 3 podcast today with me is carl richards friend and colleague from open strategy partners and we're going to turn the tables a little bit in that carl is going to interview me about how things have been going on the podcast how we got where we are and where we're going next so large virtual round of applause everyone for carl richards all the way from ontario canada Take it away, Carl. Thank you, Jeffrey A. McGuire. I can call you Jam. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I, uh, how do you do this interview thing again? Okay, uh, let's talk about Typo 3, first season Jam of the podcast. You'd, you'd never believe he worked in radio, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the outtakes reel, correct? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not cutting anything. Are you kidding? All right, let's talk about, let's, let's talk about season one of Typo 3. Um, how did the podcast get started? What's, what, what? What was its inception, so to speak? In my in my open source community of origin and in one of my past jobs, I had the great privilege of, of running a podcast, and I did a couple hundred episodes of that, and most of them were interviews. And I really believe that open source communities live and breathe from the individual people in them, and not just the famous quote unquote, important ones, but everybody's got something to say and and everybody's got something to contribute. So it's a format that I love. And in my daily life, anytime that I've had a commute or a regular exercise routine, I love listening to podcasts. And since 2017 or so, I had been out of the podcast game. Someone in the Typo 3 community approached me last year in 2020 and said, hey, I know you like those things, and seems to me like it could be a good time for Typo 3 to have a podcast again. Why don't you think about that? And I thought about it, and I proposed it to the Typo 3 Association, and there's an official channel, an official way to propose budgets and projects, and the idea was taken on, and well, I mean, 2020 was really challenging. Uh, we got there in the end. And um, and I'm, yeah, I'm really happy to say that we've wrapped up a uh, 13 episode season one. So what did you hope for, for application, the type of three community podcast? What, what goals did you have in mind for it? Open source software is the product of years of collaborative effort and thousands, tens of thousands of people working on it. That software wouldn't happen without those people. And those people wouldn't know what to do or how to do it or how how important any given thing is without without this community around it and the community is such a complex web of relationships and and of course it's highly technical and when you talk about all the the the, the technical ways to contribute and and pull requests now in git and and roadmaps for the core and features and functionality and all of that stuff still the individual people are what make these communities and the individual people are what the, you know, they're the ones who create the software in the end and improve it and refine it in the case of typo three, since about 1999, there's been this powerful, interesting collection of individuals making this stuff compared to some other long-term successful open source projects. I had the feeling that not everyone within Typo3 knew each other as much as I would hope. And I have a side mission. I feel that it's time that Typo3 really comes back out into the world, back beyond Central Europe. Because it's great open source software, because it's great community software, it has a lot to offer. It's it's very up to date and very relevant for today's web. And a lot of my efforts and a lot of the things that we've done at Open Strategy Partners since 2017 have been building towards Typo3 coming out, coming back out into the world, uh, being a relevant 
obvious choice in North America, in Asia, and 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 Australasia, and wherever. I think my theory is that if we know people better, we know who we're working for and who we're working with. And I think, especially in a time when it's really hard for us to have a beer together or even have a conference together, I think that hearing people's stories is really, really powerful. I love meeting the people behind this stuff. I love finding out what motivates them. My entire technology career has been about the humans behind the technology and about connecting humans with each other and with opportunities and so on. So I thought that it was a really, really good time to sort of reintroduce people from the community to the rest of the community. And um, I'm loving it so far. And I hope people out there are too. I I have gotten uh, wonderful, genuine compliments, and the, the thing seems to be going well enough. We We never promoted it much in season one. That's something else that we're changing, I guess, coming up. It's funny that you mentioned getting the word out or the coming out of of Type 3 because I live in the Western world where and I never heard of Type 3 until I until I joined Open Strategy Partners. So I certainly have learned a lot about it along the way. And we had some great guests as well for our first season of application, the Type 3 community podcast. Rochelle Foucault, for example. Yes, that was my that was the first episode that we released and the first interview that actually did kicking this thing off again. And she's a long-term member of the community and now a member of the association board and frankly pushing out into new territory. The type of three is present in France, but it's um it's not it's not as present as it could be. So I had a lovely conversation with her, um, featuring, among other things, a large glass of red wine on her side of the camera, which was awesome. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the other guests that we had. A fellow Canadian boy, uh, Patrick Gaumont. Now, this is when we can prove that it's a small world here, because you say you have no connection with this stuff. You don't know anything about Typo Three, and yet Patrick's brother lives about twenty how minutes. Far from and you? I found that out shortly. Oh, I guess it was about um, about a, 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 a few months in with Open Strategy Partners and introducing myself to Patrick Omar right. and he says, Oh yeah, my brother lives just up the parkway, up the, uh, what we call the thousand islands parkway. And he says, yeah, I haven't been there in a few years, but I know he's, that's the one that they named that's the, the salad dressing. That's there. right. That's it's the a one. very famous road, <laughs> but yeah, literally he's up the road and Patrick Omar about uh, probably about two and a half hours for me. So small world for sure. And Patrick is the webmaster of Quebec.ca and runs a, a, a bunch of really important government infrastructure. And he's a sort of a shining lighthouse outpost of Typo 3 in, in um, outside of Central Europe. And he he's actually the reason why Typo 3 is really strong in Quebec. And and uh, that there's a couple of agencies there. It's really, it's, uh, it's, he, and he's also just straight up funny. He's got a standing joke that he tries to work into every conversation. And I don't think it's going to work very much longer. <laughs> the first few times I called him as I was getting to know him, he'd always end up saying, oh, you know, I am sorry, but uh, I only speak English about a week and a year. And, um, but Patrick is joining the Typo 3 Association board, meaning that he's going to have to speak English a lot more. So uh, good luck with that, Patrick. You can always call me. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is I'm speaking with him myself, and maybe it's because we're literally you know, within a few hundred kilometers of one another, but I had no problem understanding his English. So it's <laughs> not an issue at all. And then we wrapped up the season with um, what I... I think what started out to be a regular recording, but it got so deep into conversation that we had to dedicate three episodes to this. And it was a great conversation you had with Volker Grobom. I don't know whether the conversation with Volker was an epic or a saga, but I booked 90 minutes with him, like I book with everybody in the hope that I can get 30 to 40 good minutes. And basically, three or four hours later, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> where are we? It was, um, he's so interesting and he's such a deep thinker and he's got great ideas. And his job now as chief product officer of Typo 3 CMS is also really, really interesting. 
and he's working for this community product itself and coordinating with Benny on the theme-based roadmap. And I'm so impressed, and I'm so impressed with his thinking about uh, something that I say a lot, but um, channeling the wishes of the community, channeling real agency needs, real client needs, and turning them into software. And and um, from our perspective at Open Strategy Partners, Foyker says something that I think is brilliant that I think we should probably quote on our own website, but product communication should be part of the product itself. It's not an afterthought, but spreading the word about your product is essential to that success, right? So that fits perfectly with our mission and with our investment in Typo3 and everything. And I, um, yeah, so it was an amazing, amazing and long conversation spread out over episodes 11 and 12 and 13. I really enjoyed it. I hope everyone else has enough patience to cope with it, but, um, you know, it's out there now, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we did our best. You can actually see the lighting in the windows change from noon to afternoon to evening to overnight. No, it wasn't it wasn't that long, but it was, certainly was a great discussion that that you that you had and in hearing it back was blown away by by the content. Actually was blown away by all of them because as I said, as I'm walking through and you know cutting these up and piecing them together, I'm learning about all of the aspects of typo three and how it is. And again, it's learning it's technology, but it's, it's understanding that this is something that is, that affects us in ways that we don't even understand that we, we don't understand in our daily lives. And obviously more an integral part in, in Europe than say it is in North America, but certainly the application so to speak of typo three has phenomenal impact on how we live our daily lives. I'm flattered to to hear you say that. I think that helps another part of the mission for the podcast, which I think is uh, if people from the outside see a healthy, happy community, if they hear a few examples of these interesting people contributing to things, it's another gateway to getting more people to using Typo3. It's another channel where people could discover it, learn more about it. Uh, and, 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 and have a chance to jump in. So the fact that you feel that, you have no connection to the web or CMS per se, um, historically, and yet you find these conversations interesting. That's a good sign. So, you know, so thank you. Nice. <laughs> All right. So of the guests that you spoke with, I I wanted to see if you could narrow it down to one. They all had great content, by the way, and all great ways that they're using Typo3. And we found out through application how they're using it, but of the guests you spoke with, who had the most creative way in which they're using Typo3? This is a tough question. And I could say, I could slice and dice this group. And I think in the end, what's maybe the most interesting is is the range of different relationships they have with it and the the things that they do I, I like to ask people what a cool project was and, and, and you know, Volker talked about a really um, groundbreaking project or, you know, a, more than a decade ago that sounds very much like how things work now and what have you. But to be honest, um, Rachel and Thomas and Louisa and Benny work for agencies that do client projects. So to some degree, they're involved with building websites. Rachel and Patrick are uh, involved with the Type of Three Association and contributing their time and and thinking to the well being of the community and the relationship with the world. And Matthias Schreiber is this almost unique representative in the world presenting this commercial support options and enhancements to an open source community product, which is fascinating. And Foyka is technically employed there, but also like working in a really unique role, thinking about the product itself. And this multiplicity of relationships highlights the really strong community that Typo3 has around it. Um, You could also say that André, you know, he just sticks around running the infrastructure because he loves the community and he doesn't really do anything with it in his day job anymore. Even though in his past, he wrote, oh, you know, he was pretty cool because some code that he wrote as a as a student or as an intern or something is still running on a on a at a on a website. I think he talked about that. That was pretty cool. But you know, Louisa volunteers and runs marketing for the project. Felicity through 
being at OSP uh, helped make this new amazing book. But she also had no background in Typo3 before she joined Open Strategy Partners now. And now she's a, a official volunteer and on a couple of the community teams. And she's, it's all... I think this. I think this web of relationships is is overall the most fascinating part out of that. If I'm if I'm allowed to cheat that way, <laughs> of course you are. Uh, it sounds like they all get a gold star though in some capacity for, you know, their contributions and how they're using Typo three and and some of the most their all their creativities are different, but they're certainly using it in some capacity and bringing it to their not only what they do but how they're helping others as well. Absolutely, yes, yes. I do have a favorite story from season yeah. one, though. I do have a favorite story okay, from let's season hear it. one. Patrick Guermont, crazy person in a wonderful way. Quebecois, also in a wonderful way. And Typo, th- very deeply enthusiastic about Typo 3. I was interviewing him and he was on camera. And his his home office, his home office studio is actually a studio. Okay. And behind him where I could see there was a sitar and an upright bass and some guitars and stuff. And I just asked sort of like casually like, Oh, Hey, you musician, do you play that? You know, I think it was a sitar maybe in the Mac. And he's like, Oh, I play all of this. And he picked up the camera and panned through cellos and multiple electric guitars and acoustics and all this stuff and keyboards and all this stuff. And he's like, but actually what I'm doing right now is I'm building custom guitar pedals. And then we started a huge music geek out uh, conversation, and I'm a musician myself, and and it's exactly the sort of passionate geeking out about something you know that everybody does in in this world of open source, right? But you know, everybody's also got their thing that's not the code or whatever. It was really fun, and he's really <laughs> he's really it. It was just so much fun, and. Almost as a joke, I'm like, so hey, uh, we don't have music for this podcast yet. Are you going to write the theme song for me? He's like, oh, um, is it okay if I do it next weekend? Because I'm really busy right now. <laughs> and so the origin story for our theme music is Patrick's interview. And he sent a few demos, and one of them I liked, and I thought it was just so quirky and strange and i put it straight on episode zero and then he's like oh, that was my demo it was terrible why did you put that on there and i was like no no it's awesome now record the production one and we'll have like a raw outtake version and a production version so we have we have about three versions of that and we have some um some some of the source files and and things and we're we're gonna mix it up a little bit more with his music in season two i hope but the um you know the music for the podcast came from a community member and i I don't know. I just think, I think that's a really beautiful, that was a really beautiful moment. For me. Certainly one of the memorable ones too. I remember seeing that video and seeing all the instruments and I'm thinking, am I in a music store? No, I'm, in, I'm looking at somebody's <laughs> office. So what, <laughs> do, what did you learn from season one? The good and certainly the areas of opportunity moving forward. I hoped to find all these stories and every conversation I have gone into has been wonderful in its own way. Everyone gets excited about something different. And as long as I remember to listen and notice, I think the the conversations have gone some really interesting directions. And with the goal of introducing these people to to the community and and sharing these stories, I think that's gone as well as it could have so far. I'm, I'm very happy with it. There have been no problems. Oh, and frankly, Having these conversations at times has been a tonic for me in the 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 year of the pandemic and the year of the lockdowns and the chance for me to make quite meaningful connections with people and have long, deeper conversations with people over over an hour or so has been a real blessing for me. And I think that's that I'm I'm really grateful for that chance, frankly. The challenge has also been figuring out how to do this best remotely. In my quote unquote, old days, I did 220 or 240 episodes. And, you know, of those probably two, at least 200 were interviews. And of those 200 interviews, 180 probably were in person with a microphone in someone's face. And I liked that vibe. And I liked that personal energy. And the remote thing has come together remarkably well. However, we have tried three, four, five, diff- six different platforms for recording these things. And, you know, respectfully, some 
uh, people I speak with only want to be on op- free and open source platforms and using, and, and that presents its own set of challenges and the commercial platforms that we're familiar with and less familiar with, each of them seems to have advantages and drawbacks. And it's been a real, that getting the technical side right has been really hard. And I've lost interviews with people. I've lost one entire half of an interview. So I have one person speaking and then silence in the gaps, which isn't very much fun for the listeners and um, had incredibly varying video quality. Um, I like to have a video version because I think people enjoy seeing 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 someone else's expression when they're when they're when they're excited about something for example so the technical side has been a real challenge and and coming up with a with a workflow that makes sense and sort of figuring out the promotion and that's coming together mostly i'm not sure that we're ever going to get the bugs out but i but um yeah i think we're i think we're settling into a i think we're settling into a zone i think we've got most of the bits Covered as long as the like on the days that the gremlin. And let's face us. it, since 2017, I think you said was your last inception into into podcasting. Technology has evolved. There's almost an expectation, and I'm recognizing this too as somebody who has a podcast as well and helps other people prepare their their podcast. But there's almost an expectation for not just audio. There has to be video, and part of the marketing ends up being also audiograms and transcriptions. So it's not just about cranking out something that is in one format. It's multiple formats. And that evolved, as you said, immensely in the last 12 to 18 months for obvious reasons. I also noticed the the not only the technology landscape has changed and the devices have changed, but the there's an incredible service ecosystem around mm-hmm. podcasting now. So happily, we're in the second renaissance of the podcast and and all of that. Do not consider it a disadvantage that there's that there's a million podcasts out there. I don't mind. I think people get to listen to what they want to in many cases. The the service landscape was overwhelming for me to come back to and say, you know, I could because so many of the things that I used to have to do by hand are completely um, just a given now. And there's all these new. Yeah, it was it was pretty interesting stepping out. But um, the fundamental truth of having your voice in someone's ear is a privilege. And I think that we need to talk about things that people care about. And and uh, I think we can have an effect. I think we can make a positive difference in the world. And that's what I'm, it certainly seems like we've had a a positive influence in the type of three community. Uh, How has it changed the type of three community and the outside world for that matter? I am not going to make a big claim about that. I will say that we've gotten compliments about the podcast and I, people have contacted me about contents of a couple of the podcasts in a positive way with questions or uh, wanting to know more. That's great. I know that we have a couple of real fans out there, and that's fantastic. That's really flattering. And I think, like I said, I think we are introducing people to more of the community, and I'm I'm very, very glad about that. You know, but when you ask if we're making a difference yeah. in the outside world, right, I don't know if we are yet, and we kept a sort of a semi-low profile in terms of promotion because I wanted to get a few episodes out before we before we pushed it too hard, the really good news, and maybe this is a good spot to shift gears. So the good news about season two and going forward now from mid 2021 onwards is that the application, the Typo3 community podcast is now really officially part of the Typo3 um, community family in that we will promote ourselves through the at Typo3 Twitter channel our videos are now integrated into the official Typo3 presence on YouTube. So we become part of the information program. And it could it could come to pass that the uh, podcast will include other formats and other hosts. And, I'm, and I think that's pretty exciting. And I think that's a real interesting opportunity. And I think if people have ideas for an episode or a conversation or a, or a mini series or something, but don't want to go and make the investment of starting their own podcast... We have the infrastructure and the the potential to be a channel for you if um, if you've got that idea. So I'd love to hear about those ideas, and I think it's a really really interesting opportunity to to be even more of a community. That's really exciting, and and certainly um, a good segue yeah. too. And to and what 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 else can we expect from season two? What's new? What's different? 
obviously being in the the official type of three channel is is part of it and that's a great place for application to be uh, what else can we expect i'm hoping to zero in on consistency and quality now i already said that the gremlins uh, make that impossible some days and I know that some of the things that we've already got in the can were challenging days. So there's never going to be a perfect episode. But like I said, we're getting our tooling straight and our process straight. And that's going to be, we're going to make it as good as we can and as fun as we can. And I, I'm i hoping to have a regular feature maybe once a quarter or twice a year where we bring in different internal community leaders and have conversations about the state of the project. For example, we could talk with Benny about the core, Volker about the roadmap. We could talk with Daniel Homerodan about the expansion committee and, and how things are going um, to, to bring Typo 3 to Africa, to Asia, to North America, and so on. We might talk with someone like Matthias Botlesniak about mentoring and the state of that and what we might do more. So I think that there could be some theme-based episodes or like a, a quarterly or 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 twice yearly check in about the project. I'm quite excited about doing that. And and then yeah, and then we'll see what people want. I've I've been trying to do a suggest a guest list. And just with the guest suggestions, um, I think I've already got more names on that list than than we have slots in season two. And I have my own list of about 30 more people that I wrote down that we still haven't talked. So I don't know. So if you're enjoying this podcast, um, yeah, let's let's make it happen. Let's keep it keep it rolling because um, yeah, I'm enjoying. Do we the want ride. to spill the beans of who we can expect as far as who we're interviewing for season two. We have a a few names already that are on the uh, the hot sheet, so to speak. All right, okay. So coming up in season two, in um, no particular order, uh. We will be talking with Annette Jänischen, Daniel Siebmann, Stefan Busemann, Adrian Zimmermann will share his obsession with Typo 3 and <laughs> snowboarding with us. It's a pretty fun conversation. And Daniel Homorodan and I had a, a really nice conversation as well about what he does about Typo 3 in Romania and Eastern Europe and about international expansion. I'm, I'm really, really excited to get that one up soon too. So yeah. Very, oh, very cool. Carl. Thank you for thank you for turning the mic on me and uh, grilling me about uh, what we've been up to. Thank you also for your help. Carl is part of our behind the scenes production machinery, and he is, uh, apart from being a wonderful human being, he's helping us with this production. And he's the sort of person, uh, if you've got an idea about a podcast or if you want some speaking coaching or some other things, those are some of the things that Carl does in his own time. And I would be very happy to hook you up and, um, and uh, you know, get in touch with Carl. Carl, shameless plug. What's your uh, website? It's what's your Twitter? Website something? is carlspeaks.ca. Carl with a C, carlspeaks.ca. And yeah, love to have a conversation with anyone who's right. interested in finding out more about that. And uh, yeah, thanks, Jam, for this opportunity. And I'm looking forward to an amazing, amazing season two. And, and I think we talked about this Woo-hoo! roughly. Uh, just one final question, and I'll throw it back to you to do the wrap-up. Uh, overall goal, mission for Season 2, can you narrow it down to one thing? I want to do more of what we started in Season 1 and then make it better. <laughs> Jam, again, thanks so much for this opportunity. I'll throw the mic back to you. Okay. Be gentle, though. It's expensive. All right. So this was our... Um, I'm not sure if it's an interregnum or interstitial episode. I'll have to go and look up the words properly. But this wraps up completely and totally season one of Application, the Type of 3 Community podcast, and then takes us into starting season two very, very soon in a podcast app and YouTube uh, in your neighborhood. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your time, Carl. And for everyone out there listening, I hope this was at least reasonably interesting, informative, and uh, see you all soon. Thanks to the Typo 3 Association for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you, B13 and Stephanie Kreutzer, for our logo. Merci beaucoup, Patrick Gaumont, Typo 3 developer and musician extraordinaire, for our theme music. Thanks again to today's guest. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe in the podcast app of your choice and share application, the Typo 3 community podcast, with your friends and colleagues. If you didn't like it, please share it with your enemies. Would you like to play along and suggest a guest for the podcast? Do you have questions or comments? Reach out to us on Twitter at Typo3Podcast. 
You can find show notes, links, and more information in our posts on typo3.org. Remember, open source software would not be what it is without you. Thank you all for your contributions. Thanks, Thanks Jim. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to hit stop, and we're going to hope that all of this thing uploads and compiles and, and does its thing. Here we go. Do not close this tab. Do not close this tab. Mm-hmm.